Hey guys, today's lesson is going to be on least common multiple. So let's go over a couple definitions to get us started. So we're going to review factors and then talk about multiples and then what is least common multiple. So in the last couple days slash week or so, we've been working on factors and greatest common factor. And remember that factors are the numbers that divide another number evenly. Um, we typically think of factors as always being smaller than the number we're looking at. Uh, we're going to still be using factors, but we're going to move on and start really looking at multiples. So oftentimes we'll say that multiples multiply a number. They're usually bigger than the number. Um, typically why we say usually is because if we were talking about the multiples of 10, um, you would say 10, 20, 30, 40. So that first multiple when we do 10 times 1 is the same as 10 and the rest are bigger. Um, same for factors. Um, typically factors are all going to be smaller than the, the number we're looking at. So the factors of 10 are 1, 2, 5, and 10. So we still have kind of that equal size, but usually smaller. And then kind of our main concept, main idea for this lesson is least common multiple. So we really kind of break that down. Least means smallest, common. You need two or more numbers so that you can kind of compare things. So what do they both have? And then multiple. Um, so what is the smallest number two or more numbers go into? Or two or more numbers can both multiply and make. So least common multiple. Smallest number, two or more numbers can both multiply and make. Or smallest number that they both go into. All right, let's go ahead and start looking at how we find least common multiple. So we are going to have two methods again, and I'm going to show both methods here pretty quick to try to keep this video kind of short. Um, we have the list of multiples, and then we will do least common multiple with prime factorization. Um, so this first one, the list of multiples, you really just um, can use your multiplication chart or just your multiple multiplication facts, I guess. So when we're doing um, least common multiple with a list, okay, a list of multiples, um, I'm basically just going to start, I might do 9 first since that's a smaller number, and then I just literally think, okay, 9 times 1 is 9, 9 times 2 is 18, 9 times 3 is 27, 9 times 4 is 36, 9 times 5 is 45. So I like to say start with the first 5 multiples of a number. So that was for 9. Now let's look at for 14. Okay, again, this is where your multiplication chart, that big multiplication chart you have, I gave you in class, is very helpful. Um, but we can also multiply and find it as well. So we would do 14 times 1 is 14. 14 times 2 is 28. 14 times 3 is 42. 14 times 4 is, let's see here, 56. And 14 times 5 is going to be 70. All right, so looking at our first five multiples of each number, okay, and that's just kind of a rule of thumb. We're just kind of looking through and seeing, okay, do we have any common multiples? Um, often, if you look at your smaller number, or actually, no, if you look at your bigger number, um, and just kind of compare. So 14, do we have 14? No. Okay, 28, do we have 28? No. 42, do we have 42? No. And then I'm here at 56, but we're already past the multiples of 9. Since we don't have a common multiple, we're just going to add in some more multiples. So that's why that the first 5 is just kind of a generic rule of thumb. It just kind of gets you enough to get you started. So let's add a couple more multiples of 9. So after 45 would be 63. After um, 63 would be 72, after 72 would be uh, 81, and then after 81 it would be 90, and then 90 would be 99. Okay, so got a couple more there. Um, I don't see any common multiples yet, so let's do a couple more multiples of 14 here. Um, after 70 would be 84. After 84 would be 98. Oh, so close. Okay, and then after 98 would be 112. Okay, and then after 112 would be 126. All right, so let's add maybe a couple more multiples of 9. Let's see here, we got 108, 
we've got after 108, so if I'm adding 9 would be 117, and then after 117, hey, look at that, would be 126. So we now have our least common multiple. It took a little while to get there, okay? It won't always take this long, um, but, you know, we started with those first five multiples or so of each. Okay, I think I checked off six there, but the first couple multiples, and then you kind of just keep adding as needed. We would write our final answer statement, the LCM of 9 and 14 is 126. There's always a least common multiple. You just might have to really look for it. That's why this is a good example for that. All right, so I've added in a couple kind of reminders. If you want to think of them like steps for how to do this, um, list those first five multiples of each number, add more multiples if needed, and then really what you're looking for is that first or smallest common multiple. When you're looking for least common multiple, you literally want the first or smallest. There's no need for us to keep looking. Uh, when we were doing greatest common factor, it was the other way around because we wanted the biggest one and we usually started with the smallest, so we had to kind of work our way through. Um, but list of multiples, you just find those multiples. What's the first or what's the smallest one they have? Let's go ahead and take a look at how we would do this exact same problem with prime factorization. Um, so we did a similar method when we did greatest common factor, um, but how we solve it will be done a little differently. We're going to start off by finding the prime factorization for both of these numbers. They're pretty small numbers, so it's going to be pretty quick for us. 14 I would break into 2 times 7. 2 is prime, 7 is prime. 9 I would break into 3 and 3. Okay, and then we would compare their prime factorizations. So I've got 9 is 3 times 3, and 14 is 2 times 7. So for this problem, we, in greatest common factor, we found the matches, and we brought them down, and we kind of paired them together. What you'll notice is we don't have any pairs, okay? They don't both have a 2 or both have a 3, for this problem. They're both actually very different. Um, so with prime factorization, we do still, or I'm sorry, with least common multiple with prime factorization, we do want to still pair things up and bring them down. But in this case, we have nothing to pair up. So you're just going to bring everything down. Now this looks different in each problem, but for this problem, because there's no common prime numbers in their prime factorizations, we bring everything down. And then what you'll notice is we can then multiply this out. And I might start with maybe I want to break, take my 3s and make those into the 9. And then 2 and 7 make 14. Oops, not 17. 14. 14 times 9. Just multiplying that out. This is how I multiply. You don't have to multiply it the same way. Uh, 10 times 9 is 90. 4 times 9 is 36. So that makes that 126 that we found in the last problem. Okay, so we found it this way, okay? You pair up prime factorizations if you can. In this case, we couldn't, so we brought everything down. In the next example, I'm gonna show you how you would pair things up and bring things down. All right, so for this next problem, I don't have it pre-written now, but that's okay. We're gonna come over here, and we are going to find the LCM of, let's do, um, let's say 8 and how about 10? Find the LCM, the least common multiple of 8 and 10, and we're going to do this with prime factorization. So to start us off, we would split 8 into 2 times 4, 2 is prime, 4 is not. So 4 becomes 2 times 2. Okay, and then 10 would split into 2 times 5. Both of those are prime. So here's a good example. We're going to do our 8 is 2 times 2 times 2, and our 10 is 2 times 5. So I'm kind of getting dots in there for multiplication. Okay, now, if you remember what I said, we do try to pair them up. So looking here, notice how they both have a 2. So I'm going to pair those up, match them up, bring down a 2. 
Now, they don't have anything else in common, okay? But I brought that first two down right here. And then I'm going to just bring everything else down. After you've made your pairs, you still bring everything else down so that we can multiply, okay? And then that last step is still multiply and 2 times 2 times 2, if we're getting pretty used to that by now, 2 times 2 is 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 5 is 40. So we'd say, say the least common multiple, the LCM of 8 and 10 is 40. Okay, kind of sloppy handwriting, I apologize. Okay, and we did that by finding their prime factorizations, bringing down what they had in common, and everything else. Okay, so I always think of least common multiples being the friendly one because everybody is invited. All right, in a second, I'm going to show you these reminders for what you need to do. All right, last recap before we end this lesson. Um, here are kind of the four steps of finding least common multiple with prime factorization. We found the prime factorization of both numbers. Okay, that was up here using our factor trees. We lined them up. We brought down or found those common prime numbers. And in this problem, there was only one common prime. There could be more. And then we brought that 2 down, that's the red 2, and then we bring down the prime numbers without a match. So this 2, this 2, and this 5, they have no match, no pair to line up with, but they still got to come down here. And then that last step is just multiply all those prime numbers together, and that's your least common multiple. Um, feel free to re-watch this lesson to help you make sense of what we just learned. Let me know if you have any questions.